Hey everyone, it is Danny, and welcome to this update video. I hope you're doing really great. And so we're going to be taking a look at the latest updates for our two active tropical cyclones in the Atlantic. We've got Hurricane Franklin, and there is also Tropical Storm Idalia. So Depression 10 strengthened into Idalia earlier this morning, and it is likely to become a hurricane as we head into Tuesday. And so I'll be taking you guys through the latest, and uh, there is some uncertainty down the road. So we're going to be looking at all that is expected. And we also want to talk about those tropical waves out there, even though we have an imminent threat to land over in the Caribbean right now. We have to look at what is going on outside the Caribbean across the main development region. There are two tropical waves moving in. So before I go into details, please do subscribe if you haven't yet done so and tap the bell so that you never miss an important update. So as we look at the latest uh, outlook coming from NHC, there we have our two active cyclones, Italian in the Northwest Caribbean and Franklin out there well to the southwest of Bermuda and then that area that is shaded off the coast of Africa. So we can see some development of a tropical wave which is yet to emerge but should do so uh, here in the early part of this new week. And so let us go ahead and return to these satellite imagery. We're looking at Franklin firstly and here we have the hurricane, a category 2 hurricane that is expected to further intensify becoming a major hurricane and could peak as a cat 4 with winds of 130 miles per hour so right now we see that the worst of it is offshore uh, nowhere is under a watch or a warning however if you're in Bermuda you want to keep watch because this system could make a very close approach go into the cone forecast here we can see that shaded area now that is representative of the extent of tropical storm force winds and we see that M there the M represents major Major hurricane H is for hurricane and if we would see S that is for a tropical storm so we see that Franklin is expected to make a close approach to Bermuda and note that the center doesn't necessarily have to follow with this trajectory here we could see a little bit of shift further to the right or to the left and uh, if we're in Bermuda as I was saying, you want to keep watch because if it is that the system will make a closer approach, uh, those tropical storm force winds or conditions could be experienced. And as such, uh, a watch or even a warning could be required. But let's see what happens as we head into tomorrow. But the system is not expected to make landfall. So it is going to be uh, moving to the northeast and further out into the North Atlantic. Currently, it has sustained winds of 100 miles per hour and is moving to the north-northwest at 8 miles per hour. So not a quick move right now but of course as I said it will continue to intensify and then now we're heading on to the uh, Caribbean so here we are taking a look at the basin and we can see tropical storm Idalia not the most organized storm but it is very close in proximity to land and thus bring in some tropical storm like conditions to parts of the Yucatan even for Cuba and uh, that rainfall extended as far south as parts of uh, other parts of Central America going down to Honduras even some of that more moisture influence in that activity in northwestern uh, or western Nicaragua and even, and even for Jamaica as well. So we see that this activity is quite widespread, but over time we should see the storm uh, get itself together nicely, especially as it makes its way into the Gulf and uh, we should see some further intensification of it. Some models call in for potential rapid intensification, which wouldn't be impossible once environmental conditions are conducive, which is likely. So conditions should be favorable enough to allow for this to, fav uh, to further strengthen and become, uh, I would say it could make landfall going from a strong cat one all the way up to potentially cat three landfall at this point in time. That is what I'm expecting. And as I mentioned earlier, there are some uncertainties, which I will go on to very soon. So we've got Idalia up there and uh, over in Hispaniola, we also see lots of showers and thunderstorms, all that moisture feeding into Franklin, much not going on for Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands, nor for most of the Lesser Antilles, maybe some passing clouds across some of the islands such as Barbados uh, going to St. Vincent nothing crazy though and then for the ABC islands much not happening either Trinidad pretty sunny evening nothing crazy happening there either and then now we want to go ahead and take a look at northern South America so we can see that lots of activity is popping up across some areas but for the Guyanas it is mostly sunny nothing crazy going on for most areas some areas are likely experiencing some of that thunderstorm activity that is developing due to the daytime heating and in Panama 
we can definitely see that there is some uh, thunderstorms developing there as well going on to parts of Costa Rica. So that is what we see happening, guys. And now we want to go ahead and return to Idalia. So as we take a look at the visible satellite imagery, so that center of a rotation, that low-level center is just within that zone. And there we can see that counterclockwise spin. So this storm is going to be consolidated. It is going to be getting itself together, taking advantage of the conducive conditions and intensifying. As I pointed out, sometimes in the early updates, the NHC seems a little bit conservative, but the storms actually end up being a lot stronger. Not for all storms, but uh, for quite a number of them, especially those that rapidly intensify. So unprecedented intensification is a thing where a storm just explodes out of the blue uh, and rapidly gets itself together, rapidly becomes a major hurricane. Hopefully that won't be the case for this system here because we're talking about uh, lives being affected and this is going to be unleashed in very dangerous conditions. And so now we're taking a look at the cone forecast for Idalia. So here we can see maximum winds 40 miles per hour. I think it might be a bit stronger. And then it is moving to the northeast at 3 miles per hour. So it's barely moving right now in the northwest Caribbean. And it should gradually strengthen. And some models are calling for this becoming a major hurricane, which would not be something surprising, especially with conditions being conducive enough. But we can see that there are additional watches in place. So highlighted in blue is a tropical storm warning so a tropical storm warning is in effect for uh, the Yucatan Peninsula from Tulum to Rio Lagartos, including Cozumel, as well as Pinar del Rio in Cuba. And then a, a hurricane watch that is in pink now for Florida. That is in effect for Englewood to Indian Pass, including Tampa Bay. So those are the areas that are under a hurricane watch, which will eventually be upgraded to a hurricane warning. And then a tropical storm watch that is in uh, yellow that is in effect for Isle of Youth, Cuba, south of Englewood to Chocolosky, Florida, as well as the dry Tortuga. So, those areas are under that tropical storm watch, which means tropical storm conditions are possible within the next 48 hours for the hurricane watch. So that means such conditions are possible also within the next 48 hours. And then there's also a storm surge watch, which has been issued for Chocolosky to Indian Pass, Florida, including Tampa Bay. Now, that's storm surge. Matter of fact, there is going to be a super moon. And and we know that these astronomical phenomena actually affect the tides of the planet. So uh, we find that the tides are going to be higher coupled with an incoming cyclone. So that storm surge could be off the charts for some areas. That inundation, which is caused by the winds of the cyclone pushing the water on shore, that results in flooding of many coastal areas and is a significant concern when it comes to these strong systems making landfall. So if you live near the coast and you're under a watch, it is time time to evacuate and get to somewhere safe and uh, hopefully all will be well when Idalia moves in regardless of the intensity but uh, it is paramount that all the necessary preparations are being made right now because this system is likely to make landfall as we head into Wednesday morning so it's really just tomorrow and Tuesday but as the evening approaches on Tuesday and as we head into Wednesday conditions uh, conditions will significantly deteriorate as Idalia gets ready to make landfall fall and as i said there could be some shifts within the track here there is some uncertainty even looking at the track guidance uh, we can see that they're kind of all over the place however we see the greatest density heading toward the big bend area of florida some of those uh, models want to take the system moving further into florida so let's see what's going to be happening with it let's see what it does as we head into tomorrow morning and i will be keeping you guys posted so uh, a lot of heavy rainfall maybe some flooding right now across those areas in the northwest caribbean the yucatan cuba currently under those uh, warnings and even that watch for Aleph Youth and then eventually those uh, hurricane conditions, the strong winds, the storm surge, the heavy rainfall, the possibility of tornadoes, all possible as we head to the middle of this week and so that is what I wanted to share with you in regards to Idalia guys and as I mentioned earlier we want to take a look at those tropical waves out there so we're going back to the satellite imagery and here we have these two tropical waves which are well outside the Caribbean right now now that one is likely to approach late Tuesday heading into Wednesday and as such uh, if it sustains enough activity it could bring some increased rainfall to parts of the Caribbean and the GFS model in particular has 
has been a little consistent about seeing some sort of development heading toward the Central and Western Caribbean. So uh, this was the 12Z run. So this is as we head into Friday, head into the end of this week. We can see here that GFS is showing that low pressure area making its way well, uh, well to the south of Jamaica headed towards Central America. And eventually we see something moving into Nicaragua as we head to Sunday now off next week, over a week from now, something else developing off Africa. So pretty interesting ahead. Nothing new is marked by the National Hurricane Center, of course, and not all models are picking up on this. Some hints of some increase in moisture, but hopefully not anything too crazy, which seems unlikely at this point in time, but I'll be keeping you guys posted, and hopefully this would bring a relief in terms of all of the heat uh, for the Eastern Islands, because it has been very, very hot. Uh, we're in summer, and I mean, this year there are above average temperatures that are bringing some more of those undesirable impacts impacts or effects to us and so hopefully that wave will sustain enough thunderstorms to result in that cool down without unleashing very dangerous conditions but i'll be watching everything for you guys and keeping you posted on a day-to-day -day basis so stick with me and that is pretty much it for this update i trust and hope that you found it to be quite informative but if you have any questions please leave them in the comments i'll respond once i get the chance to and as always remember to be with wise